hello. Ah. It's a huge block. Our hunt for Atlantis leads us to the Greek islands. This is clearly an incredibly sophisticated society. We're a giant volcano. The volcano is literally alive. It's apocalypse, that's what you're looking at. Destroyed an advanced civilization. So I think someone earlier lived here. Now we're tracking down an even older city. We need something older. It's an infant barrier. Wiped out just like Atlantis was. Ashfall, earthquake, and tsunami. Is it gonna blow? Oh, I can see the gases. The story of Atlantis is the greatest historical mystery of all time. And nobody can find any evidence for it because they're all looking in the wrong era. I'm Stel Pablo, and I've been obsessed with Atlantis my entire life. Greek philosopher Plato wrote that Atlantis was the biggest superpower of its age, but a natural disaster caused it to sink beneath the waves in a single day, around 9,600 BC. But I have a new theory that says that date is completely wrong. I believe the real date is 5,000 years later, and it changes everything. Oh my god, amazing. That's it. I'm teaming up with geologist and explorer Jess Phoenix. Oh yeah. Together, we're going to follow the trail of evidence to some of the most legendary locations around the world. This is the most comprehensive search for Atlantis ever. Wow! And we're going to find it. Stable slopes here. Yeah. It's a little dicey. This region is really tectonically active. I mean, it's it's constantly evolving and changing, and it was doing the same thing more or less when you're looking with the timeline. Interesting, because we're going to Pavlo Petri. There we have a sunken settlement. It was destroyed by an earthquake, but then slowly started being submerged. Only in recent years has the sand shifted to reveal you know, two more football field size areas that haven't even been excavated yeah. yet. We're in Greece, Plato's own stomping grounds. Heading south from Athens to investigate a recent discovery at an ancient sunken city called Pavlo Petri. Pavlo Petri matches Plato's description of Atlantis in two key ways. It was at the southern end of a large peninsula, and it ended up beneath the waves. I just want to see some geologic evidence of destruction for wiping out an Atlantean civilization. What I'm really interested in as well is that the evidence here of whether Pablo Petri dates all the way back to 5000 BC, my date for the destruction of Atlantis. Hey. Hello. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. All right, lead the way. Okay. <laughs> you know where you're going. Yeah, yeah. Expert underwater archaeologist Dr. Despina Kutsumba is giving us exclusive access to the newly discovered areas of the site. The city's out here all underwater. Under, yeah, it's all sunk. Here in 3000 before Christ to 1000 before Christ, people lived in their houses. They were farmers, uh, they were fishermen. We are at the, the edge of the town. Oh, OK. okay. You have to imagine that this is what's the hill uh -huh. okay. uh, that surrounded the town. And the town is all here. Oh. Sunk. It's a drowned town. Yeah. It's all, yeah, sunken city. That's yeah, amazing. Sunken city. Right. Because right. we're in Peloponnese, and yes. Peloponnese gets so many earthquakes. Yeah. This area is just earthquake central. <laughs> So what I'm interested in is the newly discovered section of the site. What exactly did they find that was so exciting? We had Neolithic shirts. Oh, you did? Neolithic oh, border, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Under, uh, under the sea. Late Neolithic, that's right in my timeline for Atlantis. This is exciting because you're still discovering. Yes, of yeah. course. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a place that can give us information for many, many years yeah. more. Well, let's go have a look for ourselves. Pavlo Petri was discovered in 1967, and most of the ruins date between 1000 and 3000 BC. Not nearly as old as the 5000 BC I pinpoint for Atlantis. I'm going to be looking for any signs of a catastrophic uh, geologic event. So earthquake, you know, landslide. Uh, I just think that the, the most likely thing would be earthquake damage. This should hopefully give us uh, whether or not 
this event happened in your timeline? I'm going to be looking for the older stuff. There were Neolithic shards down there. I want to know if there's any visual evidence of an uh, earlier layer, earlier than 3000 yeah. BC. Come on, we're going ahead to the street one of the settlement. Copy that. Oh, here is the grave. It's an infant burial in the settlement. Oh, it gives me chills. Can you see this? This is building nine. Look, you can see the whole foundation. What year is it from? It might be from the third millennium before Christ. Look at this. Pottery shirt. It might be a connection with Minoan civilization. This might be Minoan. We know they were coming here from Crete, from the early Bronze Age to the late Bronze Age. Wow! The Minoans were one of the most advanced civilizations in the ancient world. What were they doing this far west? It's like two football fields worth of material that's been uncovered that oh. no one has really excavated yet. The disappointment for me was I really couldn't tell earlier layers from later layers. And I couldn't actually see anything that would indicate one way or the other if an earthquake was involved in drowning the town. But the fact that Minoans were here is really intriguing. Yeah. They match a lot of Plato's description of Atlantis. We really need to follow that link. Finding evidence for the Minoans at Pavlo Petri is a really interesting clue. For over a thousand years, the Minoans were the supreme power of the Eastern Mediterranean. Their base was in Crete and the Cyclades and the Aegean. They traded with Egypt, with Canaan, with Cyprus. But placing the Minoans at Pavlo Petri pushes their empire further west and makes that empire much bigger than I realized. Now, the Minoans were really technically advanced. So, I mean, they had huge cities. They had multi-story buildings. They had sewers, an advanced navy. They also had writing. Everything Plato said the Atlanteans had. So if their empire is bigger than I thought, then are they older than I thought too? I mean, can we push the date of the Minoans back further than the 3000 BC that the history books tell us about? Can we get it to 5000 BC? If the Minoans were the Atlanteans, then any evidence of that is going to be at their capital on Crete. So we have to go to Knossos, right there. Jess and I head by ferry across the Aegean to the largest Greek island, Crete. Just south from the modern city of Heraklion, by the ruins of the ancient capital, Knossos. This is huge. They had 100,000 people lived here at its, at its height. This is so cool. See, this is a drainage system. Oh, yeah. Plato talk about irrigation and the ability to move water around. So this is a really good clue. <laughs> Over there, look. Writing. Plato said that they would write the laws on a pillar in the center of the city. This is really cool. It's a three-story building that's 4,000 years old. <laughs> um, yeah. And look at the beams. Yeah. They designed it to try and withstand earthquakes. Black and red and white, uh -huh. the colors of Atlantis, according to Plato if these restorations are accurate. Well, that's an interesting decor choice. Bull horns. Now, Plato yeah. talked about bulls and bulls being sacrificed to Poseidon. Yep. And this is clearly a huge religious symbol. They were sacred animal in Atlantis. Bulls could wander around the religious areas. Oh. OK, look at the priests. That's pretty. Plato mentions uh, that the priesthood in Atlantis wore azure robes. Yeah. And every single piece of clothing they're wearing there. It's got blue. Bright blue. We've got 
monumental architecture. We've got these drainage systems. We've got writing. We've got bull worship. We've got them wearing blue robes. We've got trade. There's a lot here that makes me see a connection. This is clearly an incredibly sophisticated society, highly advanced for almost any people of the time. But then, do you think this was Atlantis? And that's what kills me, because <laughs> I don't think this one was. Mm. It's not underwater, and there's no sign of any natural disaster. Right. But it's so close, I think we're on the right track. This is huge. Jess and I are on the Greek island of Crete. Well, that's an interesting decor choice. Bullhorns, looking for connections between the mighty Minoan Empire and Atlantis. Minoan culture lines up so well with Plato's description of Atlantis. There's evidence uh, here on Crete that settlements were showing up at around 7,000 BCE. The thing about Knossos that removes it from being Atlantis proper is there's no massive catastrophe. Yeah, that's the thread we're following right now is what could have happened in terms of a natural disaster. So we're heading 93 miles east from Knossos to Palaikastro the ruins of the second largest Minoan city. Recent excavations there suggest a massive natural disaster may have hit the island. Archaeologist Sandy McGillivray has spent his career excavating the site. Hey, thanks for meeting us. Welcome. Hey, Sandy. Welcome. This is really interesting. It's extensive. Around 1500 BC, this was a huge city. It goes all the way back under the olive trees there down through into the sea. Wow. It's way bigger than I thought. How many people lived here? Like 30,000 people. 30,000 people. That's it's massive. the second most uh, populated city probably in Crete after Knossos. Well, and how far into the sea does it go? Uh, we don't know. And how, what's the earliest? The earliest that we've found here goes back to about 2,800 BC. Uh, but if you go up on the hills, you'll go back into the Neolithic. So five, 6,000 BC. People were here a long time. People were here a long time. You know, one of the things about Crete, you have to remember, is that with the sea level rise, uh -huh. a lot of the early population, if they're living down by rivers on coastal plains, that's all underwater. Right. Yeah, so there's probably way more stuff that you sure, could excavate. A whole, it's just, there's a whole archaeology yeah. waiting for us of the first arrivals in Crete sitting there. So what ended the main period here? Follow me. So this was an open courtyard. What we found here was an open area uh -huh. with a colonnade running along that side. Okay. These blocks had been broken up, smashed up. Ooh. We had to put them back into place. Oh, wow. And um, This is scoured. Oh, they're pow yeah. pulverized. They were, they were pulverized. No, this yeah, is exactly. this sort of damage you get from only like a really high energy event. What we found evidence for is earthquake. I think this looks like more than just an earthquake. Are there other spots in this area where we might be able to see kind of the devastation? Yes, down on the beach. Really? Down on the beach, there's real good deposits. Oh, okay. oh I definitely want to check that out. Well, this way. <laughs> yeah, to the ocean. This was a Minoan settlement. It had 30,000 people. Yeah. It was a huge city, some of which is under the water and hasn't even been excavated. Oh, hello. Ah! Aha! Ah! Oh, my God. Well, that doesn't belong here. No, that's, that's clearly been worked. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge block that... It's probably a wall. Easy to work. Bottom but it's line. it's definitely a large worked block from a substantial building. Well, let's go look for more. Let's look for more. Hmm. Huh? OK. You see that. That's... Is that natural? No. No, it no looks... you know that. I don't know whether that's a floor or a wall or... I'd say floor. It's all deposited horizontally in nature. People like their roads to be flat, too. I can, I can see floors. pottery up there. Yeah, I mean, this 
this is absolute devastation. And right now, it may not look like that much because everything's still. Yeah. But to think about the amount of force you need to move all these chunks of material enough to knock away whatever walls were there. Yeah. But what could have caused such massive destruction? I don't know. Let's keep looking. I'm trying to see if there are any clues. OK, this is really cool. So basically, with a tsunami, oftentimes you get like these big blood deposits, uh -huh. where it's obvious like the water was just super energetic and it was smashing into everything. Yeah. Uh, but here, you've actually got it smashing into a settlement. I noticed when we came in that the ground here, this soil gets real fine. Yeah. And if you look at this area, see how that just kind of smears away? Yeah. And if you look at my fingers, you can see they're covered in this really super fine ash. This is pulverized rock. And yeah. now this part, this probably was ash that sank down through the water and was mixed in uh -huh. with the marine stuff. Yeah. But nonetheless, I bet you this is volcanic ash. Oh, it's a volcano. It would have been huge, explosive eruptions. Ashfall, earthquake, and tsunami. It's not just a one civilization killer. It would be multiple if you were near the coastline. This is one of the most incredible examples of people coming into direct conflict with a natural disaster. Wow, this is a great lead. Let's go see what we can find that will link us to Atlantis. Yeah. All right, so we saw evidence of a tsunami right around here. So. Where would that have come from in this area, do you think? If we want to talk volcanoes in the Mediterranean, we have a ton of different options. This whole area is really active geologically. That's because there is a subduction zone here, where the African plate, which is on this side, is diving under this smaller plate. And what that does is it produces a whole sequence of volcanoes throughout the area. And only one volcano is big enough to actually destroy an empire like Atlantis, and that would be Santorini. Well, it makes sense archaeologically. I mean, because about 100 years ago, they dug up Akrotiri under the ash, which is a settlement with Minoan connections. I know because of the circular shape, it's been connected to Atlantis quite a lot. I've always thought it was a bit of a gimmick, though, like, you know, something to pull in tourist dollars, but you actually think it's a genuine candidate. It's the only thing in the area that's big enough to cause a geologic catastrophe on the scale needed to wipe out a civilization. There's actually evidence of a devastating eruption about 1600 BC. My only problem is 1600, because that's way too late for me. So do you think there's a possibility of finding any evidence there of earlier eruptions? Oh yeah, there definitely were earlier ones, but in order to see if they're in the right time frame, we're gonna have to dig into the rock record. I mean, get our hands dirty. All right, well, rest up. I'm gonna head out in the morning. Perfect. Okay. We have arrived. I think it's over. I think, I think the chase this is, is over. This is it? You found it? The island of Santorini has long been linked with Atlantis. It's a tourist hotspot and a volcanic one. The island is a huge volcano, a ring around a central caldera. A colossal eruption in 1600 BC spewed 14 cubic miles of rock into the atmosphere the biggest eruption in recorded history. It buried the ancient city of Akrotiri under 30 feet of ash. And clues to an earlier eruption may be buried here too. Wow. Wow. This place is incredible. Oh my god, this is huge. This is... Look at this. This is a city. This is like a full city. But it's massive! <laughs> We're at the Minoan city of Akrotiri on the volcano island Santorini. It was wiped out by a huge eruption around 1600 BC. But we're looking for evidence of an earlier eruption, closer to 5000 BC, that fits my timeline for Atlantis. 
I mean, this is a dream come true. I've always Seriously. wanted to visit this place. Yep. The history it's... geek in me is freaking out right now. This is an ash fall deposit with broken rock fragments, and yeah. then there's it's in a matrix of fine pulverized rock. Right. That's what that is. So it's just, you know, pulverized rock can collapse roofs on buildings. It can, because it's so heavy. Look how thick the walls are. They're like two feet thick. It really opens up here. So you got a channel, I guess. Oh, look. So you got channels. So you got like a drainage system going oh, in here. Oh, yeah, that's very intentional. So they must have had water intentionally flowing through. Oh, look, more drainage there. This looks like it's an underground drain. You found their plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 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 right there. Oh, wow. All those broken stairs. Yeah. The way the break is in a similar location for each yeah. stair. That's right. It's mm -hmm. like a straight line right down the middle of the staircase. Yeah, that's evidence that an earthquake affected this area. Volcanoes have their own type of earthquakes that actually occur when magma is moving underground because uh -huh. it, the, the rock itself is molten, breaking cold rock. So it's like boom, oh. boom, boom. So you've got the double whammy of quake activity and the volcanic hazard. Ah, now this, this I've read about. Um, okay, hang on, let me, let me absorb, all right. Right, what do you see? A really high wall, which yeah. is impressive on its own. Yeah. And then concrete, but clearly that wasn't what was there before. Right, so the concrete used to be wood. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this was built, well, I don't know, 17, 1800 BC. So what you're talking about is like the origins of structural engineering, because that putting wood in the vertical supports uh -huh. and having the rigid stone floors, that allows the buildings to sway a little. It's got exactly. give. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this is like really advanced. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're building things that, to withstand earthquakes. This is proof that they are adjusting and adapting to the environment. They knew what was here. Tell me why this particular site is always connected to the Atlantean myth. OK. It's a large, functioning city, like uh, Plato talks about. Which it is, with, very much. <laughs> yeah. He gives a description of them using irrigation. They were really good with water. They were wealthy, they were, they were rich in all kinds of agricultural products with a really good harbour for ships. And, and I can... the concentric circles, which you get from a caldera, possibly. So that is really seductive, because so much of it fits with the theory. OK. I have other problems. I was waiting for you to go, but. But. First of all, it doesn't fit my timeline. Right. About 5,000 BC. That's the BC. big problem. Well, it's a problem. Yeah. A bigger problem is when this place was destroyed around 1600 BC, the Egyptians actually mention it, saying there was a huge explosion somewhere in the Mediterranean. You would expect that. The sky went dark for two <laughs> years. Dead people were being washed up in the Nile. Oh, God. So, um, and they don't mention Atlantis. So th I think someone earlier lived here, left and came back. So there could have been something earlier with your timeline. There right. could have been. There could have been, and that's what we need to find. All right, cool. Yeah. But see, this is interesting. They've got a bunch of rocks that are, you know, rectangular, and then you've got some that are just blocky. So they've reused an older building here. Oh, to, re to shore that's up a wall? That's reused stone. Mm. That's reused stone. Right. Look how deep this is. I mean, you see that wall? Mm -hmm. Those faced blocks go all the way down to the bottom of this 30 foot. Yeah, it's not just that, but there could be earlier eruptions underneath. I mean, there will be. Right. It's just a given. Right. Um, so if there's earlier eruptions and we know they were reusing stone, then there could be other cultures buried beneath this one. Yeah, it's highly possible. Right. So I think we need to go out and really look at what's out in the current volcano to see if it gives us any clues to the history that's earlier than this. Come on, then. <laughs> I love Akrotiri. I mean, I could spend months there. Two-story buildings. I mean, the architecture, this engineering that can withstand earthquakes. Oh yeah, and talking about earthquakes, look at the stairs broken. That's amazing. I mean, it's it's fascinating, but it's not Atlantis. But what about this middle island, this central thing here? Because I mean, that you know, the Gospel according to Plato, <laughs> that 
is a pretty good match for the central island of Atlantis, which was a mound, you know, and it was a religious center. It's not nearly old enough. Uh -huh. So that's Nea Khamenei, and it's the, the center of the modern volcano, but it's only formed within the last few hundred years. I think that we actually do need to see if there's any kind of geologic catastrophe that happened right. before 1600 BC, because there would have been people there. So what do we do here to find evidence of earlier? So we have two options in that first one. We'd have to rappel down every cliff in Santorini. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the second option is more doable. And I think that if I go around the island by sea, I might see some preserved evidence of earlier eruptions. OK. All right. Well, let me know what you find. All right. See you soon. All right. trying to find older eruptions than what took out Akrotiri. But over here, the, the late Bronze Age eruptions right down to the water. But obviously for Stell's timeline, we need something older. It's a bit of a bummer because if I can't find anything older, then we're kind of in trouble. Hang on. OK. I've got an area exposed here that actually shows rock that looks like it could be older. That's good news. That's really good news. Maybe this is an eruption that killed people who lived here before Akrotiri. If I can get Stell over here, we may be able to do some investigating. We're on the Greek island of Santorini, looking for evidence of an eruption close to my timeline for Atlantis 5000 BC. Hang on, I've got rock that looks like it could be older. Jess found an ancient ash layer on the southern coast. So we're heading there now to investigate. You weren't joking. No, I, I was not. This is really cool, this spot right here. See that really whitish layer that you can follow along the cliff face? That's what I think is our marker line. It looks to me like everything above it is all included from the 1600. The whole thing? Yeah. That's massive. It's apocalypse, basically. That's what you're looking at. Bloody hell. We can actually try to get a sample of the older stuff and see if I'm right about about this, because, you know, okay. I don't know. That's 100% another eruption. I just don't know the age of it, so that's what we're trying to figure out. OK, so now I'm just going to collect some with the rock hammer. OK, so this is really poorly cemented, poorly lithified. Uh -huh. Just put that in the notes. And I just need a couple of ounces. OK, mm -hmm. so now do the measurement. OK, it's got. It's about 10 feet, 4 inches. OK. So what we're just going for now is a general thickness of this, this deposit. So that is substantial for an ash fall deposit. Because this is such a thick bed of this ash deposit, uh -huh. that's an indicator that this eruption that I think is older would have been huge. That was a substantial eruption. Yes. Enough to wipe out civilization? Yeah, we're talking, I mean, this is going to be something that the whole region would have noticed, this type of eruption. This, above here, is something the whole world would have noticed. Right. So we've got to kill a volcano. Could it be, in my timeline, could it be like 4,000, 5,000 BC? You know what? I don't know. That's something we got to try to find out. Right. Yeah, that's why we came and got the sample. We'll send it to the lab and see what they come back with. So we need to go to the central island, near Khomeini. If that's where Atlantis was, we need to see it. You know I'm in. Nea Khomeini formed after an eruption only 450 years ago. But before the massive 1600 BC eruption, an older island stood in its place. When I think about a volcano, I'm thinking of Vesuvius and Pompeii and, you know, all these dead people. But uh, Akrotiri doesn't have any dead people. Could they have been vaporized? Or, I mean, what's going on? Well. Because of the ash that we see that's deposited here, I would say no, they wouldn't have been vaporized. 
it's much more likely that this volcano gave a lot of warning to anybody in the area. Uh. And I think we can confirm that if we get up close and personal with Nea Khomeini, which is the new resurgent dome that's growing up from under the sea again. And the warning would have been what? Earthquakes, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a number of things. Earthquakes, um, small steam-driven eruptions. Uh, one of the things that I'm looking for that would have been kind of like an early warning system would have been gases. This is one of those things where we can confirm that what happened in the past is what we're seeing now so, if we go take a look. So it's a cyclical nature and this could have just happened over and over again. Yeah. Good day for a hike. Is it going to blow? I would let you know. This is where lava would have come out of the ground, but a long time ago. This one's from the 1500s, so I don't think I'm going to find anything, but I am going to just check with the thermal camera here. So we're here looking for any signs that this is still an active volcano that would kind of match what people back then would have seen. Is there any evidence for it at this part? This one, the only heat we're seeing is from uh, the rocks absorbing the sun's heat. Okay. So this is not anything to write home about here. So you described it as like an early warning system. What would that look like to them, though? Well, one of the things that I'm looking for that would have been kind of like an early warning system would have been gases, right? OK. So if you're standing somewhere and there's a lot of gases coming out, you go, hey, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, you could actually see the gases. It's not like. You maybe could have, but okay. you also may have felt them because the temperature does change near a, a fumarole, as we call them. All right, let's see if we can find something more active. Sounds good to me. Smell it. Uh, no. Oh, it smells like rotten eggs. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it smells like rotten eggs. You don't smell it. No, I just got it. I just got it. Hey, that's good. Come on, come on. All right. What, what is it good for? Oh. oh. That's a fumarole. Oh, I can see the gases. They often smell like rotten eggs because there's a lot of sulfur. Okay. We're getting 138 degrees Fahrenheit, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can actually see the movement of the gas on the camera screen. It's not a lot because the wind is pretty strong, but it's there. The volcano is literally alive. What kind of gas do you think it is? Hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide. Will it melt my hand? No, it won't, but you don't want to inhale it straight. It's acidic gas, acid gas. Okay. So it's not healthy to breathe. It can so, damage so your lungs. So the yellow down there is sulfur. Yep, the yellow the white, is sulfur. And the white is what? Alkaline minerals. OK. This is lava that can actually produce very huge explosive eruptions that would be absolutely devastating to anybody nearby. time to get this reading that we came so far for. But we need to look at it closer. I mean, you're literally feeling the heat from the bowels of the planet. It's the power of the Earth itself. Ah. All, right. All right, this is as far as we go. 175 degrees Fahrenheit almost boiling, and this is after it's already come all the way up from the magma chamber underneath. You cannot miss this. Atlantis had all the religious centers in that central island. Oh, because, OK. And then if you think about uh, the Oracle of Delphi, yeah. that was built uh, around a cave uh, that gave off gases like this, and it would make them hallucinate and stuff. So oh, right. I mean, this is a very mystical kind of thing. <laughs> so they would have alerted everybody. Yeah, they would know. Wow. They could have had a warning, and that's why they left. But how big a warning? I mean, are we talking seconds, minutes, oh, no. hours? Uh-uh. Like weeks or months, maybe even more than a year or two. Oh, so they had enough time to get everybody out. Yeah, exactly. Which is probably why there's no dead guys here. We have a circular island that is one giant volcano. 
home to an advanced civilization, the Minoans, who had learned to live with the monster beneath their feet and to survive its eruptions. We also have a central island that's an uncanny match for Plato's description. If we can find proof this volcano erupted around 5000 BC, we could be standing right on top of Atlantis. Santorini embraces its connection to Atlantis so strongly, there's even a lost Atlantis museum. Right. Yeah, no time for nonsense. Mm -hmm. Come along. I am so powerful. You, you can tell me. Right. Where is it? Oh, look at the model. Ooh, I love dioramas. Oh, that is awesome. They've got the concentric circles. They've got the religious area in the center of the middle island. Mm -hmm. They've got the bridges. And a lot of gold paint. <laughs> a lot of gold paint. So this is a pretty good representation, but Perfectly. it gives you a really good rough idea of what Plato was they talking about. They basically brought his vision and to life. The thing about this model is it actually looks plausible. You could have built bridges across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not, you're not convinced. No. But it's a really good model. It is cute. So therefore, it's real. How about we do some real geology and find out? So we just summited that. Yes, we did. Doesn't look so high from here, does it? No, but it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> this entire thing that we see is the volcano. I right. mean, this is the body of it. It's just that's the heart at the moment. Yeah. And, you know, over the millennia, this thing's built itself up and destroyed itself again and again and again. It's fairly obvious to me now there were cataclysms earlier. I mean, before the eruption in 1600 BC, because you look at Akrotiri, we look at Crete. In both places, here and there, we've got those buildings with wooden elements so that they could absorb the earthquakes. Yeah, it's engineering. But they were all designed and built before the big one. Yes. So they already knew what was going on. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, it happened before, they evacuated because there's warnings, and then they came back, they resettled, and they brought that technology and that knowledge with them. Right. And eventually, they became the Minoans. But before that, they were the Atlanteans here on Santorini. Okay, so you're following that line just down the years of history. Down the years. Logical. I mean, it's it's knowledge transfer. Right. We, we find it in cultures all over the world, so it stands to reason that that would be likely yeah. for any type of Atlantean civilization, that we'd see remnants of it somewhere. Yeah. Right. And all we need now is the ash sample back from the lab. Yeah. And to place the older eruption on my timeline. I cannot ignore the geology. Ignore the geology at your peril. All right, Stell. I got some volcanic ash, and it does tell a story. There were eruptions before 1600 BC. OK, that's good. But there was a huge one as well, 15,000 BC. Yeah, nothing in between right in your time frame, nothing big enough no. to cause the devastation we would need to wipe out in Atlantis. That leaves me uh, high and dry there. Um, it kills me, but rocks don't lie. Yeah, so, so that's the Minoans out of the picture for me. Well, you see, this is, this is my problem, right? Minoans uh, on Santorini have these incredible two or three story high buildings that have uh, engineering that allows them to withstand earthquakes. Which takes a while to develop. A very long time. It doesn't just drop out of the sky. So we're not looking for the people at Akrotiri. We're looking for their ancestors. So where were they? All of these islands here are just ripe for that sort of disaster. There's the Cycladic culture from there. How old are they? The Cycladic people were earlier than the Minoans. They're from this area north of Santorini. If we can find where they came from, they are our clue to Atlantis. Athens has a museum and it's dedicated to Cycladic art. So if we go there, we may be able to find a few clues and just see what their skill level was in the earlier periods. Wow, there's so many. These are the statues that Cycladic people are famous for. It's really abstract. It's really kind of like stylized. I mean, 
but it they also... clearly know what a human body looks like and uh -huh. how to do it. They just choose to go with this abstracted form. Well, that's interesting. They've got some obsidian. It's one of humanity's first and best tools. Obsidian is incredibly fine when it's, especially if it's been napped into a really sharp edge. It's a very advanced skill. Look at this. That's azurite. Azure blue. And that is a connection directly to Plato. You know, the- Oh, the Atlantean priests. The, yeah, and they wore azure robes. Whoa, oh my God. That's like a, that's life size. I want to know more about these people. They have the ability for abstract thought, for rituals, for religion, for monumental architecture, for a larger civilization that can operate over multiple islands. So these, these people, whoever they are, I can see connections to Atlantis. Oh, yeah. I mean, what we're looking for is their granddads and grandmothers <laughs> and, and figure Ooh. out where this journey of theirs started from. That could be the right track to get to Atlantis. Yeah. This is really exciting. The Cycladic people have got all the characteristics Plato writes about. I think these are the people we need to follow. Oh, oh OK, look, look. That island looks like a pyramid. This is a really distinct chemical signature. Whoa, what about that? I think we have an ancient quarry. Incredible! What are we looking at right now? Troy City Wall. That's massive city. It's still going. OK, here we go. This is the good stuff. What the? Oh, my god, the entire field. <laughs> this is substantial. 